Hi, Will for Sound on Sound here at Music Messer 2017 on the Giraffe Audio booth with Jakob, who's going to tell us about their exceedingly clean sounding compressor. So Jakob, it's passive, a passive compressor. Yeah, you know, we like passive stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we, it's a tradition in our company. No, yeah, we, we set out uh, in the first instance to do a passive compressor uh, because we had a vague idea we, we could do something that was clean in a transparent way. I know that sounds a bit counterintuitive, but you can do something that's clean and boring. But we wanted to see if we could get clean in a way that was exciting. Yeah. And so you've gone for the, the passive route. And how are you doing that? Uh, what we do is uh, we use a trick uh, dating back from our notorious infundibulum uh, passive clipper where we use some uh, kind of so a bit of free gain we get in an audio transformer for stepping up our signal and so we can make it so the whole audio path of the g24 compressor is like uh, you have the input going to one resistor and one audio transformer an optical cell and then the output level potentiometer that's all you have in the audio path then we have a sick lot going on in the sidechain functions, but we'll get back to that. But uh, but the audio path is only four components, and it's clean as a whistle. Right. So, can you tell us about some of the uh, the controls on the front then? Because it's not particularly regular. Oh uh, yeah. There's. I mean, it, this kind of got out of hand at a point. So, uh, yeah. F first of all, it's a it's a stereo compressor uh, with only one set of controls per. So you don't need to fiddle uh, two knobs to you know to get your stereo tracking. Sure. That's kind of important for us. Uh, so stereo compressor, except it's not really a stereo compressor. It's kind of MS compressor. It's right. it's uh, actually only compressed in M and S with a gra gradually variable uh, you know amount of M and S compression. But right. when you put that amount so equal amounts of M and S compression, it equals stereo compression. So it's in the, when it's in the 12 o'clock position, it's 12 o'clock, it's, it's the same right. as a left-right compression. So actually it's a left-right compressor that is derived from an MS compressor. Except it's not. Except it's two MS compressors. Right. <laughs> because when we had this very clean, minimalistic audio path, and we were thinking about what could we do uh, in the side chain to control this, we thought about uh, well, why not add another side chain to the same circuit and uh, have two compressors? I mean, get a compressor for free, right? So two for one, yeah. So we just added another side chain with the same functionality uh, that just looks at the same parts of the signal and shines the light on the optical element that controls the gain. And then we added a mix control between the two channels. Like uh, you can set one channel to uh, low ratio, low threshold, slow timing for gain riding. And then you can have the other channel for like knocking off. When things get too loud, you limit at a high level, high threshold, fast acting. So it's like you have two compressors. And now we have a problem. Because you have two compressors and you need to decide which, which one goes first. So how do you decide? Uh, you have a knob for that. We, right. we, we have the, the feed control which goes gradually from feedback to feed forward. Uh, like you, you put uh, one of the compressors in for feed forward compression, it will only look or its input argument or the input to the side chain is taken from the unit's input, which means this unit comes first and it doesn't react to the compression itself did or the other channel did. Uh, so it's like it behaves like a feed forward compressor. You so in in actual in a, a use case, for instance, well, what would you be aiming to do with with this? What would it what would it change? What, uh, when would you use it? Uh, it's uh, the, there is a, a very big difference in the feeling of compression, whether it's, uh, you're using feed forward or feedback compression. Uh, it's like my my mastering engineer uh, locally he described it as. Uh, you, you put it into feedback, it's kind of rock and roll, and put it into forward, it's more for jazz. <laughs> but, but, but it is, yeah, that's a very primitive dis description, but there's some point to it, uh, after all. The thing is, the feedback compression uh, idea is uh, what we used to hear from like uh, the 1176 or the LA2 and all that kind of, you know, smooth sounding 
compressors. Where the feed forward paradigm is what you see in uh, in uh, like the, the DBX compressors and the SSL channel compressors and and uh, even what the dynamite is that tradition also is like uh, where you get some smack uh, and that is because the shaping of the transients uh, that depends on whether you are processing the, the signal you already processed or you're just looking at the raw signal all the time. So it's kind of two different uh, traditions in compression where here you are able to merge directly or all the way between them. And actually some of these intermediate settings are quite interesting. So you can sort of blend between the smoothness and the aggressiveness? Yeah, okay. yeah. in a way that at least I didn't predict the use, how usable it would be, but it's, it's rather fun. It's a really cool thing. It looks amazing, and we're really looking forward to trying one. How much is it going to cost, and when will it be available? Uh, it'll be uh, priced at uh, 26, 30 euros, uh, XVAT and shipping, and it is basically available now, but you need to fill in an application in order to get it, because the optical cell in here is based on cadmium that is prohibited in the EU and California. So I can't sell you that unit. That unit, you can borrow it from me, but uh, you need to fill out a form that says, when I eventually come up with one that is entirely legal, you'll get that, and you send back the old one. So you're selling illicit compressors, is what you're saying? Yep. <laughs> and the module is something like this. this. You, uh, you unscrew two screws and unplug a connector and send this one back and I'll have the cadmium converted into a tiny dot of orange on a piece of Raku uh, ceramics. Okay. Wow, well, uh, this has been fascinating. Uh, thanks so much, Jakob. Uh, we'll see you You're again, welcome. I'm sure. Yep, definitely. Cheers. Thanks.